Chapter 6, Heart of a Titan. Good, I hope this is the resolution to the double cliffhanger last episode. Dear Callum. Here we go. Over the years, there have been moments when I let there be a distance between us. And because I'm your stepfather, I was trying to give you the space I thought you needed to love your real father. Even though he passed away, now I wonder if I should have held you closer. Whoa. He gave him the art book. But in my eyes and in my heart, you are my son. I see myself in you. I'm proud of you. And I love you unconditionally. In this letter, I will share with you a lie, a wish, and a secret. Ooh. A lie, a wish, and a secret. Interesting. Where is he? Oh, sorry, sorry, I'm not used to hearing so much story all at once. I <laughs> quick trip to the little king's room. <laughs> nice. Though I know how this story ends, it warms my heart to hear about my parents. From someone who is there. Very good. He's getting under her skin. It is ultimately a story of sacrifice and love. I can't help but wonder if that's a meta commentary on the show itself. I mean, there's a lot of sacrifice, that's for sure. And a lot of love. The king loves the kids, the kids love each other. Rayla loves Callum. Callum loves Claudia. Viren loves his mirror. And for sacrifice, the kids sacrifice their home. Rayla sacrificed her people. Callum sacrificed some Claudia sandwiches. <laughs> okay, I'll stop. All the characters sacrificed their integrity by lying constantly. You guys go first. <laughs> Yikes. Is he okay? That's some good aim. What the heck? This thing is so cool. Wow. It's kind of sad. She's not out of danger yet. Oh! That was awesome. The heart of the Titan radiates with, with life, magic. So, do you think you can? Yes, we can save them all. Yeah, but as Soraya said, it's not that simple. There are no simple solutions. I feel like I can't let my guard down yet. We must take the heart and hurry back. Yes, of course. We'll move as fast as we can. The wounded must be left behind. We can't afford to slow down. That's not really Harrow's style. You don't need to whisper, Viren. I'm deaf. We won't leave you here alone. I'll stick right. to the Maya. That's not gonna fly. Time is of the essence. No. Pragmatism versus idealism. We do not leave our wounded. You wouldn't do this, especially not my wife. Wasn't your wife's sister? Yeah. <laughs> I've made my decision, and it is final. Yeah, you know, I really don't envy Harrow at all. Like the whole thing, from start to finish, this whole story is just tough choices. And for that matter, I don't really fault Viren either. It's clear that they both really do want the best out of the situation. They just have very different ideas of what that means. This is a very old conversation. Um, it's like, do the ends justify the means? Earlier in my life, I think I would have been more Viren. I would have made the argument that just think rationally and have a clear goal and then follow the steps that give you the highest probability of achieving that goal, even if there are extreme costs. The other side though, which I think I'm getting closer to as I get older, is that the actions themselves contain some sort of moral value. And because you don't always know the clear outcome of your actions, you can grab immediate utility by doing what you feel is right as long as you have a clear mind about it and a clear heart about it. But I don't think it's just one or the other. I think there's a spectrum in between. And that's sort of the difficulty. For someone like Harrow in this position, you have to weigh that in every single choice and it's difficult. Soon you will both face a lie. The great lie of history. Interesting. There will be stories of armies and battles, but this isn't true strength. True strength is found in vulnerability, in forgiveness, in love. Reject history as a narrative of strength and instead have faith that it can be a narrative of love. Interesting. 
So first I agree that there's an important distinction between power, let's say like military power or political power, and strength, maybe as it applies to an individual, right? Like what it means to be a strong person. There are plenty of weak people who have power, and I think the virtues he described, like love, forgiveness, vulnerability, those can be strengths, but I don't think they're strengths in and of themselves. I think it's about where they come from and how robust they are in, in us as individuals. There are a lot of times people put forth virtues that are actually disguises for weaknesses. Like for example, vulnerability, right? Vulnerability could be a strength if it's a conscious choice, right? Like if you actually have power to not be vulnerable, but you choose to be vulnerable, that's a very strong thing to do. It's a very self-trusting thing to do because you know you have the power for either and you make a clear choice. But just being like weak and vulnerable is not necessarily a virtue, even though sometimes it's proposed as one. In my opinion, true strength comes from authenticity. It comes from authenticity and awareness and a sort of self-mastery over what you do. One way I think we often think of virtue is how aligned it is with society, but societies shift all the time and societies can be really unvirtuous. So I think there's an individual strength that comes from stepping out of it a little bit just to get a bird's eye view on what it is and then like making a conscious choice rather than being, you know, pushed by the waves of time. And about history, it's interesting he said, create a narrative of love. I actually feel like the way that history is put forth today is that history is full of evil. And I think neither are a complete picture. Like history is just, it's all things. The natural state of nature is kind of cruel. It's full of inequality and unfairness and tragedy and humans built out of that. And I think we have gotten to such a point where we have the luxury of thinking of ourselves outside of it. And so we put forth the idea that we should have always been perfect, maybe. On a broader level, I think we have a very disparaging view of humanity. Like humans are just parasites on the earth. Humanity is incredible. There are evils that arise from humanity, but I'm not ready to throw the whole thing out. So I kind of like that Harrow is telling Callan to reject the narrative of history. And even though the one he's putting forth, I know it's just a simple letter, it's kind of simplistic, but I, th I still think it's, it's a more positive way of looking at it. It's a nicer way of looking at it that might lead to more utility and more open-mindedness about the world. So, Rayla? Rayla can't get off this deck. My human parents had an unusual taste in names. Velas with a silent D. Got him. What do you do for a living? I'm an assassin. <laughs> oh, you're not joking. Is that bird poop on his vest? But I've never actually, you know, killed anyone. For the best. Never give up on your dream. <laughs> Thanks for the encouragement. What is your dream? Ugh, I wish I knew. Saving the world. Why do I feel like the parrot's gonna rat her out at some point? Dawn came. As the sun rose on the horizon, I could feel its heat on my neck. Like a hot doom I knew was coming for us. This writing though. We've almost made it. No, it's too early to celebrate. You just doomed everyone. There was a chill as a shadow covered the sun. Let me share some wisdom, will you? Oh, why not? I love wisdom. Me too. Life is like a river. <sighs> oh, great. Give it a chance. Don't try to control where the river goes. There's one thing you can know and control. Yourself. Who are you, Rayla? What do you stand for? Once you know that, then wherever the river takes you, you'll be right where you were always meant to be. That's beautiful. That's amazing. It is. And this is relevant to the whole Harrow Viren discussion too, you know? Because you don't know what will happen. You don't know the total net effects of your actions tomorrow, let alone in 10,000 years or whatever. What you can focus on is yourself and doing things that feel right to you and working on refining your idea of what right is and then working on refining your actions to be aligned with that vision. And if you have that, if you have that robust sense of who you are and what you stand for, you can find yourself in any number of situations and you can operate effectively and take a lot of utility from the situation and feel confident and, and strong in yourself and your beliefs. And I don't think that's the whole story, but I think it's nice to think about it in that way at least, because it takes some of the power back in your own hands. Wherever you are, you know you can be yourself, if you'll forgive the cliche. <laughs> Not with that attitude, you won't. This is our day to sacrifice. You get the Titan's heart to safety. Save all our people. It's nice to see someone else stepping up besides this arrow, <laughs> taking everything on his own shoulders. Uh oh, he's getting ideas. Wow, that was brave. Varen's no coward. Say what you will about him. Oh! <laughs> yes. <laughs> Love this dragon. Even though I know he dies, I don't want him to. 
Oh no, did the queens just die? Without him to perform the spell, the heart is worthless, and this was all for nothing. Sarai, what are you saying? I'll see you on the other side. Oh no. I'm just like waiting for it, because I know she's going to die from this somehow. So I'm just on edge this whole time. The last time I saw your mother, she said, I will see you on the other side. I don't know what lies on the other side, but I do know I will be watching over you and your brother. Always. Wow. This is awesome. And the music. The people of both of our kingdoms knew who they owed their lives to. These incredible heroes. Three queens became legends. That's amazing. I can't help but wonder if Sarai's death was in some way part of the rift that started forming between Harrow and Viren. This also has the effect of making Viren seem incredibly heroic. I mean, he was a big part of this whole thing that led to the saving of all these lives. And also he went back to fight the dragon to save the, the queens, right? He's looking kind of badass right now. Are you ready? No. But you may open the doors. He's always so honest. <sighs> Callum, I want to talk to you about life and growing up, and how sometimes there are changes you don't expect. And you can imagine how that might create some difficulty between Harrow and Callum too. Because every time Harrow looks at Callum, he sees a reminder of, of Sarai. And there's got to be a lot of guilt that comes out of that. I have a selfish wish. And that is for you and Ezrin to be free. Do not let the past define your future as I did. Create a brighter future from your own hearts and imagination. The ring. Can you see why I believe that if your mothers were here today, they would choose to join us and fight by our side? I think you are right. Perhaps they would. But I Ooh. will not. <gasps> She's strong. But I cannot repay a debt of a hundred thousand whose lives were saved by sending a million men and women to die in violence. Did you not listen? I'm afraid we can no longer... Uh, coward! Traitors, you'll all pay the price for ignoring my warnings. Damn. How do you really feel, Viren? And finally, you must be wondering about the secret I promised to share. Well, good news. The secret is hidden in the Bantha Lodge, right where you are right now. Oh no! Is it the, uh, what do you call it, the rune thing? There I've hidden an unusual cube with rune symbols on yeah. each side. It belonged to an elven wizard in Sadia, the Archmage Erevos. Perhaps it will be you, Callum, who discovers the key's secrets. Probably will be. Super secret bonus secret. Did you know that Bait, our most sour friend, secretly loves belly rubs? <laughs> That's good timing. Ah, who's a tubby lump of grub? It's a beautiful letter. It also gives Callum something to aspire to, which is great. He's sort of missing focus right now. I'm just going to take a guess and say that Erevos, what was the name? The elven wizard, is the, the dude in the mirror. There's nothing really to suggest that. It's just that they're both wizards, clearly. You probably thought I was just a crazy old sea captain, <laughs> but I got some good wisdom. I'll admit it, you do have some good wisdom. You want to know the other secret? Yes, yes. Waterproof socks. It's a metaphor. You just showed me the socks. That's not what a metaphor is. But if you got waterproof socks, you'll be all right in the river. Ooh. What's that for? You're my brother, and you mean everything to me. Is this a trick? <laughs> well, I love you too. Hey, what was that? A shadow. Eh, you're asking the wrong pirate. There's something up there. More dragons? Dragon Queen. Damn, that was an awesome episode. <laughs> That's cute. That was the dream. He still has ears though. This is the kind of episode I love. Like it just has everything. A lot of heart, philosophy, lore, action, character development, right? It's all so good. I came away from this episode having a lot more feeling about Harrow and Viren, Sarai, obviously. It gives Callum 
kind of a refocusing on his purpose and who he is. I love King Harold's suggestion to focus on creating his own life, you know, to be free to create things as he wishes, and I think that's a big part of his expression of love for Ezrin. It's a gift that Harold gave to Callum, right? Like, he, he put the focus back in Callum's own hands of being who he wants to be. And it's perfect timing because Callum has been a little bit lost in the past couple episodes. He doesn't know what he's striving for, who he is, what his value is, and so it's good to have reminders of who you are, where you've come from, and where you want to go, and who you want to be in that. And I think that the pirate's metaphor fits in with that perfectly. This is the kind of episode that I expect from Aaron he has based on Avatar where there are a lot of arcs that are running simultaneously that are coherent and they add to a really nice message overall. I feel like the floodgates have been opened and now we're just we're getting all the, the juicy juiciness. <laughs> we're getting all the beauty of the characters in the world and the story. And again, we were just on a boat and in a throne room. It's interesting how that works. Although I guess we had a whole flashback with the dragon and everything, but you know, whatever. And we learned the most important secret, I think, in the whole show which is that bait likes belly rubs. That's good to know. But anyway, that's the end of season two, episode six. I'll see you guys next time for episode seven.